In this video, we have the newest state-of-the-art technology in carbon fiber repair. It's pretty epic and it's pretty complex. It's quite something to see in action. So that's what it was before. Mm -hmm. There's a whole chunk missing. Now, a huge thanks to Rob from Carbon Bike Repair UK for allowing me to film and share this content with you. Truth be told, this video has been a while in the making and I've kept my mouth shut every time I've been to record with Rob while the robot was being implemented. So let's hand over to Rob and dive straight in. So I'm gonna take you into the, the carbon room and I'm gonna show you some of the um, solutions we've had to find to match what our bicycles like the canyon are producing incredibly wall, thin wall thicknesses, very dense carbon areas, have almost made it impossible for carbon repair to take place uh, like it was maybe 10 years ago. So what we've done is we've got a robot which can emulate the, um, we've got a robot which can emulate the, uh, the wall thicknesses almost perfectly. Um, so I'll show you what we're doing here is a, uh, this actually is a canyon and the top tube was damaged all the way through. Now to repair that by hand, we're talking about a wall thickness of no more than 0.4 millimeters in thickness. It's almost impossible to use that type of precision by hand. So the robot is actually, basically what you're seeing is the robot is emulating the mold as it was before. So whatever carbon we put in the, in the repair side of the, of the bike is removed, that any of the superfluous carbon is removed to uh, expose the, the wall thickness as it would have been originally. And really that is one of the safe ways that you can kind of meet the challenges of modern day carbon bicycles in, in the, the drive to produce thin, lightweight bicycles. So Matt's uh, kindly stopped the machine for us, so we're going to go inside and have a look and see whether we've achieved this wall thickness or not. So the outer layer here is, uh, as you've seen, the 3K carbon, which we've, uh, we apply to st stop any movement uh, across the twist of the, of the top tube, which is ideally what the bicycle needs. What we've been able to do here is just completely mimic the final ride. I'm going to show you on the computer in a second what it looks like on the computer screen and what the robot follows. As repairers, we can confidently say to you that the wall thicknesses, the densities and all that are identical to the original bike. And that's a very, very important thing when we talk about rider safety. So that's what it was before. Mm -hmm. There's a whole chunk missing. You can see how thin the material is. It's just, there's no, there's very little to be able to work with. So, and the, the point is you don't want the carbon to collapse when you apply the carbon to the surface because you change the characteristic of the tube. The tube, to some degree, uh, has to flex in the way that the designers want them. We just have to follow what they had there and replicate it, replace it. It's destroyed, isn't it? So on this uh, very lightweight Trekimondo, we have a, a very, very common seat stay fracture and um, the, the robot has ground the uh, correct amount of material out and we laid this up by hand with uh, the same dense material that would have been on here, except, as you can see without guessing, that now there's this lump on the surface. Uh, the robot, because it's familiar with the shape of this bicycle, is now going to remove the top layer material. And the beauty about that is, that at 0.03 millimeters in accuracy, that wall thickness is going to be almost 100% exactly the same as it was before. So what you're seeing is not a stick, a walking stick. This is a, the top tube of the bike that, uh, that we're busy grinding out at the moment. And you can see that this is a, a section of the bike which we took from our library of bicycles that we have here. And we've sup super implanted it over the, the broken bike where we couldn't replicate that repair digitally. So we actually take spare parts from the same model, different physical bike. We cut that bit out and we replace that component onto the bike frame. So basically what we end up with is a true frame section. If we don't have a portion of that bike somewhere, we have ways of replicating that exactly the same. But the most important thing is, by having this true shape available to the robot means that the wall thickness is exactly the same. So Jordan, this is what we're talking about, is this 
super, super thin type of bike that we're seeing today. This is the Athos, the Asperx Athos, which is, if you pick it up, uh, you'll get an impression of what we do. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything, does it? It literally weighs... I mean, what size is that? 52? Yeah. That's my size as well. <laughs> you can have a look at this. This is quite a chunky bike. This is the F-Series Panorama. That's also... I mean, that is... Yeah, it's very light, isn't it? I mean, for the size of the tubes, for the size of the tubes, that is... What size is that? 52? nothing really. Yes. So here we have an example of the robot repair. Um, it's early days for the robot. You can see this. We're super happy with that. I mean that is just perfect. So was it a top tube fracture was it? Yeah right across the top is a, is a crack across here I think if I remember correctly. Um, something like that. So it's just going through the final spray process but it's so nice to know that We've got the wall thicknesses exactly the same and the, and the density of the material the same. And we can happily send this one out. But, uh, you know, if we stick on the subject of uh, tuning bikes, mm. this is some of the challenges we face where once these bikes are broken, they're very, very difficult to fix. More so now than ever before. So here you've got the digital version of the, the frame that's currently in the, the robot scanning away. And as you can see, it's pretty, pretty nice um, scan of it. What we do, we lay the, the toolpath on top of that, which is the green bits. And if I zoom right in, you can see each individual line. So this is a toolpath. And the, the robot head basically follows each individual line around the frame. Oh, wow. And what we can do, if I change the graphic, turn the, the robot on, <laughs> then we can run the simulation, which is what you have to do to, um, to get the data. So when you run the simulation, you can see it going. You can see it going around the corner. Once you've recorded the data, you transfer it back over to the, the robot and press the go button. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch this video next for more information on carbon bike frames where I asked Rob 12 direct questions about carbon fibre frames. Again, a big thank you to Rob for sharing knowledge and letting me record this video. Links to carbon bike repair will be in the description down below. I will see you in the next one.